What is going on, everybody? It's the Prince. We're back again for a, for a SmackDown live review for SmackDown August 10, 2018, from SmackDown last night, in which we had two cliffhangers coming out of SmackDown last week, which was what happened in Milwaukee and Daddy's home, which was Samoa Joe going to the Styles house, and the SmackDown feed just cutting out right after he said Daddy's home, and we were wondering what is going to happen with. It with Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. And I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed with the fact that we really didn't get anything other than a, a thing from AJ Styles telling us that he couldn't be at SmackDown and he's not leaving his house until he knows Samoa Joe is on his way to Australia. So definitely probably not what everyone was looking forward to. We were all looking forward to hopefully seeing Something like a home, an actual home invasion instead of just the, bell, the the ringing of the bell last week and daddy's home. But we didn't get that. What we got was Paige wanting to fire Samoa Joe and, AJ, and a video from AJ Styles. Which just, like I said, probably is going to disappoint a lot of people for SmackDown. For what SmackDown was. Now on the other hand, the what happened in Milwaukee... Yeah, that kind of, I think, went a little bit better, even though it's going to lead to something else, probably. It was Aiden, put, we'll talk about, we'll show the video, of course, later, but it was definitely Aiden showing everybody a video from a time in Milwaukee where he was getting his, getting ready to, for a show in Milwaukee when Lana showed up, and... Lana said something, and I honestly think that they cut out the video to make it seem like she meant something with other than what she means, but she was talking about something else. Definitely interesting. It definitely does put a rift between Lana and Rusev. Where will this go from here? We will have to wait until after Super Showdown to find out. Of course, Super Showdown is this coming Saturday. We also had a Shelton Benjamin sighting, which where has he been over the last few months? I have no idea, but... He was definitely on this show tonight, and he's went up against Daniel Bryan, which was a damn good match, and it was a match worth watching, in my opinion. John Benjamin, of course, showed again why he is definitely misused, miscast, and hasn't been, and makes you wonder why he came back only to be, you know, in a tag team for a good bit of months, and then the Superstar shakeup happens, and then he's just not being used. Well, tonight he got, last night he got used, and it was great. Ty Dillinger, then of course, also, we'll talk about him too, came out to, he, well, he, he, he was supposed to face Randy Orton this week because of what happened last week. He actually asked for the match because he wants to, you know, defend himself, stick up for himself, and things really didn't go too well for him. We will talk about that when it gets to it later. But the show started off with Paige open SmackDown ready to fire Samoa Joe. As soon as the video stopped, we sent authorities to that house straight away. Samoa Joe did not enter the house. But reports were filed and charges were pressed against Samoa Joe for trespassing. I was trying to figure out how I'm going to manage this week, so I spoke to WWE management and they all came to a unanimous decision. Samoa Joe should be fired. A couple of no's from the chant, from the crowd, a couple of yes from the crowd. Before I made that decision and made that call, I gave another person a call. AJ Styles. I wanted to personally tell him the news and make sure his family were okay. But I felt his pain, I felt his emotion while I was speaking to him. My heart went out to him. No man should be in that situation with his family. No man. But then he said something to me that I never thought he was gonna say. He said, Paige, I'm dropping the charges. And then he begged me not to fire Samoa Joe. He said that termination was too good for him, that he would disappear and he couldn't get his hands on him. And I agree. So then he asked me, then he asked me, I want to hand out the punishment to Samoa Joe. And I said, that's crazy, but I agree. 
So therefore, this Saturday at Super Showdown, the match between him and Samoa Joe is on. But before the show, AJ Styles wanted you guys to see this clip, so here it is. I want to apologize for not being at SmackDown Live tonight. It's just under these circumstances, with everything that's going on, I just don't think I'd be able to perform tonight. This is bigger than WWE. And I don't want to do something stupid, get emotional and do something I regret. That's why I'm at my house tonight. And I'm not leaving until I get confirmation that Samoa Joe is on a plane to Australia. AJ Styles looks and sounds so defeated. I've got four amazing kids. And they need me right now. They, they really need me. I need to be here at my house. I need to be here before I leave to go to Australia. I need to be here for Annie, my daughter. Because for the past week, she's been waking up in the middle of the night looking under her bed in the closet for her Uncle Joe. <laughs> Uncle Joe. Like, like he's some kind of boogeyman. Joe, this is going to end. This needs to end. You're not coming back from the land down under. Because that's exactly where I'm going to put you. And I'm not talking about taking your lip body, putting it into a casket and shoveling dirt on it. I'm talking about burying you alive. If only that would have led to a buried alive match instead of just a no DQ, no count out match that they're going to call it. It could have went to a buried alive match, which I think would have been much more better than what we're getting. So, I don't know what else to tell you about that, but that is what we got there. Let's see here. And yes, I'm sure it's going to disappoint people a lot because there was just so much intrigue of what happened after Daddy's home, but it just didn't happen. Fabulous Truth vs. Almas in Vega, um, I'm just going to say it now, Carmella is much more enjoyable as a face, and with this Truth um, tag team with her and Truth, definitely better than what she was doing for, like, before, she, before like, than what she was doing as a heel from WrestleMania until this entire pairing between these two. She was much better as a brunette and much better as a heel, I'm just saying. The Fabulous Truth ended up winning this match with a code of silence by Carmella. Yes, I do know what her um, submission name is called. It's called the code of silence, and she makes Vega tap out. In the pack, Paige runs into Ty Dillinger, who wants Orton. Paige says you can have the match after Dillinger has to beg her a little bit. And then we get the New Day. Doing a cook, New Day Cooks. The New Day Cooks. Uh, why they have to do these New Day segments. I am one of those people who has just um, done it over the New Day. Fun fact though, Kofi Kingston yesterday came, became the, the longest reigning tag team champion of all time. With 954 days passing up Billy Gunn. But the New Day get cooked on SmackDown Live. Mean, we proudly present to you the pilot episode of New Day Cooks! This Saturday, your boys, the New Day, will be defending our WWE World Tag Team Championships! 
against The Bar in Australia at the Super Showdown, streaming live only on WWE Network. Okay, okay. But the past couple weeks, we ain't been hitting. I mean, we have been hitting. <laughs> but against The Bar, we ain't been hitting. These guys have had our number, and what we need more than anything else right now is a strong dose of positivity, which brings us to this man. I am so tired of these segments. Then we got Mr. Booty Boys over here. Who is this soul? This poor soul. Seriously, who is this poor soul? This is the man who is responsible for cooking all the pancakes that we disperse amongst the WWE Universe every week. And tonight, is a very special night because tonight he is going to share the special recipe with all of you, the WWE Universe. So give it up for our chef, Just knock my Mr. Booty Wall. Please do come out. Acting Thank you. Like a bunch of children, and instead of preparing for our title match. At Super Showdown, you're out here. What, what are you out here doing? You're, you're playing with food. This pilot is going straight to Guy Fieri, and you two are ruining it! No. We are out here to help. That's right. Yeah. You know, in case you've forgotten, Cesaro is from Switzerland. And let me tell you, the Swiss know a thing or two about making delicious pastries. I'm sure they do. Here is a, here's a little known fact for you. Back home, all my friends, all my friends actually call me chef. That's true. That's actually a true fact, everybody. They call him chef at home. Now, he may be a chef, but I certainly am. But damn, I know how to make a bacon process way more efficient. They talk to a table pancakes in the new day in the bar bar. Be proud of Seamus and Cesaro, or should I say Chef Cesaro? Oh, stop. Let's turn into Hell's Kitchen, all right. And Cesaro oh. caught by Kofi in the corner. That uh, serves him right. New Day in the bar. Don't want to wait for Australia. Uh, Trying to set up for the mid on oh. What the? Seamus threw some kind of flour or right. un, un, undone, like, um, dried. Oh. Pancake batter in Kofi's eyes. Sheamus and Cesaro trying to make sense of things <laughs> amongst the flower. Oh! Big time double backbreaker. The bar standing tall. What is wrong with these two? They're sick of the New Day's clowning around in their words. Believe they've shown them no respect. Sheamus and Cesaro wipe out the New Day. They did a little posing. They pose for a little bit and then they go over and get Mr. Bootyworth, bring him out, take the batter that's in his hand, take, well, Cesaro takes the batter, Seamus takes his hat, flips it upside down, and Cesaro takes some of the batter and just drops it into the hat. And then Seamus, you know, like a good gent, puts it back on Bootyworth's head. I don't know who this poor soul is, but he just gets six six ways of embarrassment in this in this little segment he goes to leave and shame stops him then cesaro takes the rest of the battle and just all over the rest of booty worth oh the embarrassment i you might I, you'd have to pay me a lot of money to get me to do that in front of national tv and they start just yelling at him to get him to leave. He was only here to make pancakes. Wow. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm that guy. I'm just definitely 100% embarrassed. <sighs> Randy Orton versus Ty Dillinger never really happens. Ty Dillinger gets to drop him in the Orton before the match even starts. And, but Orton gets, gets fights back and he sends Dillinger back inside. Dillinger fights back and sends Orton back outside. 
Orton sent Dillinger into the announce table, but Dillinger is the one to do the Orton back back body drop onto the announce table, and he does some ground and pound on Randy Orton, starts mocking him and everything. But Dillinger goes to toss Orton into the barricade. Orton tosses Dill ends up tossing Dillinger into the barricade. Dillinger goes to leap over, gets hit with the forearm to the face, hit with the draping DDT to the floor. Then Orton removes the, the he takes the steel steps and he's going to use them. Then he drops them, and um, removes the because the top, the turnbuckles all have the metal bars behind them that keep them together and they have a covering over them. He rips the bottom one off. Takes, I think, the right index finger, one of the index fingers of Ty Dillinger, and slides it through the. And I'm sorry, but Andy Orton just showing how sadistic he can be, even in the PG era. Takes the takes Ty Dillinger's f finger and just slides it through there and starts wrenching back on it like he's trying to break it. My word, I, 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 like this guy is a sick son of a gun, and I, I, it just, it makes for great television. It makes Randy Orton the best heel on the main roster outside of Samoa Joe. SmackDown has, and this is sad because SmackDown has two of the best heels on the main roster, while Monday Night Raw has no heels that anyone really cares about. We see Shelton Benjamin in the back. He's starting to pump out and like pump himself up, trying to you know get ready for his match against Daniel Bryan when the Miz. Walks in and says, you're welcome. He said, I saw your tweet on on Twitter because Benjamin said he wanted an opportunity. And Paige gave him an opportunity tonight against Daniel Bryan. And he says, I made a call to Paige and I was the one who got you the match against Daniel Bryan. And I just have one question. Are you going to beat Daniel Bryan? He says, in the word, yes. My miss says you have to do more than beat Daniel Bryan. You must maim. You must hurt Daniel Bryan. You must prove all these doubters wrong. Benjamin says, I've been sitting on the bench for the last few weeks, waiting to show everyone who the hell I am. And Bryan is casual, is just casualty number one. Miss says, that's the, Brian, the, the Benjamin I want to see. Thank you. And they shake hands. And that was the end of that. We have Aiden English asking a production goon about the evidence that he's going to be showing is it is it queued up and he says this needs to be seen in high def it's that that you know that important so rusev and Aiden, rusev and lana come out as you figure they would and they want to know this evidence two weeks ago and an english attacked me and that ended our team and our friendship. But then he took it even a step further by saying there's some videotape involving my wife and the city of Milwaukee. And that just makes me wanna tear his pale body apart. But first, Aiden, come out here like a man and show me, my wife, and the whole world this bogus evidence. The evidence you've all so patiently waited for is right here. But first... What a tease. A little backstory. Did you know Milwaukee is the largest city in Wisconsin? Which borders not one, but two of the Great Lakes? He's yes. You're stalling. You're stalling. You have nothing. All you're doing is just messing with all these people. Lana, please. I'm merely providing context. You see, Milwaukee isn't the forgettable city that you and Rusev so callously imply? They have history, science, culture. In fact, Milwaukee was the filming location for many unforgettable movies and TV shows. Comedies like Laverne and Shirley, or Happy Days, tear-jerking dramas like Love Actually, and Basketball. But tonight, 
more than all of those, you get to see the most anticipated premiere of the last decade. One night in Milwaukee. So we come to a video of Aiden getting himself hyped up for, like, getting himself ready for. This crowd in Milwaukee is just not worthy. There was just any way I could get out of Milwaukee to celebrate Rusev Day. Preparing himself for another night in Milwaukee. Did I, did I just wake up in the sewers or is this the home of the Brewers? There's a knock on the door. Hey, Lana. Hey. Yeah, come on in. How are you doing? It's Lana. Uh, hey, hang on, let me sure. Oh, it's okay. It won't take long. I actually don't have a lot of time, so I'll make this quick, but, um, Aiden, I actually, uh, I want to tell you something. I've been thinking about this for a long time. And I think it's important that I say it out loud. I want you. Mm, that's it. We come back and Rusev just got this look on his face like, what? He's questioning Lana, he's and asking I Lana, what's good, what is this? I show you the rest, oh I really do. But I can't. Legal obligations, you see? I'm entertaining a very attractive offer from TMZ. I'm pretty sure that's not how TMZ works. I'm pretty sure you don't, like, I don't know. And, you know, I wouldn't want to... Cheat on him. Lewis of Josh's bike and he chases after Aiden English and that was the Aiden segment leaving of course Lana in the middle of the ring. So that's all we got for the one night in Milwaukee. Did you expect anything else? They did have Daniel Bryan make his entrance for his match against Shelton Benjamin. Instead of seeing Shelton Benjamin's entrance, we see Rusev in the back asking some production goonies that where Aiden went. He pointed the way Aiden went, but Lana shows up and says, "There's more to the video than you see than 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 what you've seen." Rusev won't listen right now, and he's on his way to fa to find Aiden English. Daniel Bryan versus Shelton Benjamin was a pretty decently good match. Shelton got a Java entrance because we were in the middle of watching Aiden um, Rusev look for Aiden English while he was coming out. Benjamin had control of this match from the start. He was just bullying and beating the living hell out of Daniel Bryan's ribs. I'm surprised Daniel Bryan could breathe after how much punishment he took to the ribs. Brian does get a kick in the corner and then gets tossed into the other corner and hits a boot and like hits him with a boot. But Benjamin lifts him up and just drops him to the mat. Tries to fight Brian tries to fight back, but Brian but Benjamin with a kick to the gut. Brian does get the yes lock on Benjamin, but he's right by the ropes. Benjamin just tosses Brian to the barricade into the but he goes back and forth between the apron and the barricade at least three or four times and then drops him on the barricade as they go to break. They come back. And Daniel Bryan needs to stop this. He had he missed two years of his career, plus like three years of his career really, because of concussions. Why are they letting him do anything to do with a diving headbutt? Why? It's not a good idea. He misses, and he said you see him cl like clenching his neck and head area, and it's like you had Daniel Bryan retired for two years. And he hadn't wrestled before this year since 2015. And you're allowing him to still attempt a flying headbutt. It needs to stop. 
John Benjamin does get a German suplex off for a two count. Brian drop toe holds Benjamin into the corner. Brian then with a kick in the corner. Benjamin with a step up knee followed by a German suplex. Pin for a two count. Benjamin goes up to do something with him. It looks like he had him in a fireman's care, but Brian fights out and hits a Frankenstein or Hurricane Rana off the top rope. Guest kicks by Brian. He does miss the third one. He goes for the running knee, but Miz, who was on commentary for this entire match, distracts Daniel Bryan, who then eats a pay dirt for the one, two, three, and Shelton Benjamin beat Daniel Bryan due to outside interference. Post-match, Miz attacks Daniel Bryan and tosses him into the announce table three times, tosses him back in the ring, hits the skull question finale, says, see you at show Super Showdown, and good luck. Then we move on to Oscar versus Peyton Royce, who really cares. Oscar wins by submission. They said it was an Oscar lock, but it wasn't really. She just stretched the heck out of Peyton Royce and got her to tap out. Really don't matter. And then we had Becky Lynch presenting her, her rendition of the Super Showdown poster because she was not on the Super Showdown poster at all. When it comes to the Super Showdown poster... Becky's like, she's like, tired of being snuffed and everything. And the fact that she's not on the Super Showdown poster at all. Even though these posters are probably done well in advance, but it did fit perfectly into this storyline. But Becky Lynch presents her Super Showdown surprise. Six weeks ago at SummerSlam, I finally stopped waiting and started taking. And since that night in Brooklyn, me, the champ, has been the best thing about SmackDown Live. She has been one of the best things in SmackDown Live between Randy Orton's nastiness when he comes to heel, Samoa Joe's heel work, and Becky Lynch. I guess our truth has been there too, so, and our, our truth and Carmella, I should say, because they are a duo. Those have been the four things that have been the best thing about SmackDown Live. Other than that, not much has been great about SmackDown this night coming around. And since, and since I ran through the entire locker room and toppled the queen, I now run this division. And I have made it the most relevant thing in all of WWE. But it's funny, it's funny. The more things change, the more they stay the same, isn't it? Because still, the champ can't get the respect that I deserve. No, where's my magazine covers? Where's my new action figure of me holding the title? Instead, instead, I have to suffer the indignity of seeing the woman that I beat pose for photographs for future covers and press releases. Come Saturday, come Saturday, I am going to prove that it's this face, the champ's face, that deserves to be on the magazine covers, on the billboards, on the pay-per-view posters. Now I know Becky Lynch is sitting here cutting a heel promo, but do you not hear the crowd here? How, like, WWE has been trying so hard since SummerSlam to portray Becky Lynch as a heel. And this is technically supposed to be a heel promo, and it's not working. It's not working. The entire blow-off and trying to make her heel, they try to continue that at Hell in a Cell by having her um, not shake Charlotte Flair's hand. And it's just not working. WWE has got to let go of this entire, she's they're trying to make her heel. You have failed. company and if no one's if no one's gonna give it to me well then I'll do it myself in fact in fact I, I went to the trouble of uh, I went to the trouble of designing a new poster for Super Showdown can the champ get a drum roll please So the picture that was like the beatdown that they did last week with her taking a pic getting her picture taken with her foot on top of Charlotte Flair, she held the title above her head, 
they imposed in front of a background with the Super Showdown logo and the Melbourne the Melbourne Cricket Grounds, and it says live Saturday, October 6th on the WWE Network. That is a great poster. I'm just going to say that. That is a great poster. And the crowd, of course, reacted as a babyface crowd. I'm going to say it again. Vince McMahon, you're an idiot. And Vince McMahon, you have failed. This should be the poster for Super Showdown because it's not about Triple H and The Undertaker fighting it out for the last time. It's about Becky Lynch defending her title for the first time. So, of course, Shannon Flair has to come down to steal Becky with the spotlight. She runs out, and they go. Right in after Becky Lynch, and the melee is on right before Super Showdown this Saturday. Might have been an ill-advised decision. Becky had the higher ground. Wanted to go for the disarm. You get a spear by Charlotte. You can hear the crowd clearly chanting, Becky, Becky, Becky. So personal. They're booing Charlotte as she points to the sign. Now see, this is where Charlotte Flair is supposed to be the baby face who comes in and destroys the heel, the cocky heel, and the, the, the signage or whatever they like promoting. That did not happen. Well, she did beat her down. She puts her in the figure four. She crawls away and decides to drop down and hang off of the apron. Flair might snap Becky Lynch's leg. I don't think Charlotte even cares. Oh. Kicks her in the face. Becky chance from the crowd, booing Charlotte all the way. When is WWE going to realize, and that was how SmackDown Live end, ended, but when is WWE going to realize that their efforts to paint Charlotte Flair as a babyface is not going to work. Their efforts to pay to, to base to I'm sorry base, but to paint Becky Lynch as a heel is not going to work. It hasn't worked. It will never work. So I don't know why they keep trying to push this. They tried. They tried that tonight. That was a heel promo by Becky Lynch. That was a heel promo. Another attempt at a heel promo. It didn't work. Charlotte Flair comes out and beats down the quote-unquote heel and puts her through her own thing. And all you hear is Becky, 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 Becky. Anything Charlotte did was booed. WWE has got to let this, this, this initiative that they're trying to push that Becky Lynch is nasty heel and Charlotte is a sympathetic babyface away. It's just not going to happen. It's got, they've got to stop. They have literally got to stop. It's not doing anyone any favors whatsoever. That was SmackDown Live. WWE again miscalculating their attempt to make Becky Lynch a heel because everything Becky Lynch does gets cheered. She could put, she could, she could light Charlotte Flair on fire, and I'm pretty sure the entire crowd is going to cheer them, cheer her. WWE again with their stupidity and. This is backfiring on them, and it's just funny that WWE thinks Vince McMahon and whoever pitched the fact that they want to turn Becky heel, the fact that they pitched it that way makes them look like a bunch of idiots. But that is your SmackDown Live review. <sighs> make sure to find me on Twitter at TheFrance. Find me on Twitch.tv slash TheFrance08. And make sure to hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like this video, dislike it if you want to. And I will see you next time for NXT, the Mae Young Classic after that. 